Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I'm Nintendo Capri Sun, and we're hiding in the grass as per usual. We're in this, uh, oh, wait, let me turn that down. Um, we're in this fancy little room here. It's not actually that fancy at all. And we're gonna go trade in our crystallized charges, which I now have 240 of them. I thought I only had 140, but I guess there was another blood moon in there somewhere I forgot about or something. So, I mean, might as well. So go ahead and get producing on the energy wells. And so here we are, we're almost up to three batteries already, and we have not traded in any Zonite whatsoever for this. I haven't even shown how you do trade in Zonite for it. Maybe I should do that at some point. <sighs> Actually, it probably wouldn't take that long. I could go see, you know, like what, how much I could get, because I have a lot of Zonite, and I have a lot of large Zonite. But I'm also hesitant about like spending too much of it because of the future armor upgrade, which honestly is not even really a thing until... That, like, probably won't be a thing until the end game. And worst case, if I didn't have the zone I then, I could always grind it off screen. So let me just go ahead and show you. It's in the Great Abandoned Central Mine. You come here, like, I came here really early in the game. I was, it was like the first ten parts I was here. And I got the auto build here. And I did the, the quest with the eyes and all that. But somehow I managed to not talk to that guy. So I want to just go see, like, how much I can get. Because I have some large zonite. In fact, when I was fighting the bosses in the depths last night, I hit one vein and got three large zonite from it. So this guy over here, when you see this lava-looking thing over here, um, you can talk to him, which I assume I've talked to him. Oh, he doesn't like my armor. <laughs> All right, is this better? I mean, I could have talked to him anyway. He would have been okay with it, like, once I said hey, but whatever. Anyway, uh, I process zonite here into other materials. I am willing to accept zonite in exchange for processed materials. Yeah, okay, so great. Oh, that's uh, just pretty much flavor text or whatever. So we can get large crystallized charges, which are worth uh, 20 each. That's what the boss is dropping. We can also get small ones, which are worth one each. It does cost three zonite for one of these, which I really don't know how much that's worth it. You could still exchange though. And maybe I'll do that just to get myself up to like, say 50, but that's 30 zonite just for 10 of those. So, and you can only buy as many as however is on the, whatever's on the shelf. So like the most you're gonna get here is 30. I think you would have to wait a while and then just come back here for him to restock. Anyway, large crystallized charges, you get three of those for one of these for 20. That's a lot better. I have 24, so I can actually get all five of them. I think I might just go ahead and do that. This might be the only time I ever spend Zonite on crystallized charges, but I just wanted to do it just to show. But see, even that, you only got 100 for it. And uh, with how long it took, you know, to get the 24 large Zonite, we just spent 15 of it to get 100. So, like, that's a pretty... That's a pretty steep exchange rate, if you ask me, especially considering how easy it is to get the 100. The only pro like, to get the 100 by fighting the bosses, but, I mean, the only drawback to fighting the bosses is obviously you have to wait for the Blood Moon to do it again. But each time you do it, you get one energy cell, like, that's, that's not too bad. The farming Zonite is by and far definitely the inferior way to go about doing that, because you could just do that, you could just farm Zonite, and that would be safe and all that, but... Honestly, I, it's, I fail to see how that would, is anywhere near worth it. I'm just going to go ahead and trade this in while I'm here, so... This is a crystal refinery, and I got more, so here we go. Please wait. Too bad you can't really skip this. But I guess that crunching animation never gets old, though. I mean, like, this is what he's doing to give you MP. So this will pretty much... This, this will pretty much put us at three full batteries. Now, I feel like once you get to, like, four, maybe five batteries, you're pretty much good for the rest of the game. You can get up to 16 total, as I'm pretty sure I've mentioned before, but, um, we'll enjoy further visits. Well, I'm glad you think so. I'm glad you feel that way. So, we were in the process of going for the Great Fairies, and I would like to continue that venture, but I don't know if I need to talk... Okay, so... The next Great Fairy is right here, right over here by Dueling Peaks. There is a stable, actually, right here, the Dueling Peaks stable, so we'll need to check that out at some point. And if I had to guess, there's probably a lot of shrines around here, too. It's kind of funny that I haven't really explored this area that much, have I? But, um, I don't know if I can actually go to Kakariko and just go ahead and get the drummer. I was able to get the horn guy, though, so I can probably get the drummer. Um, Kaka yeah, let's try it. So we're back in Kakariko Village here, and the drummer guy that we're going to be talking about is right along this path over here. Now, you might not remember this, as I sure as hell didn't, but this, where he is, is actually the same place where you found Hestu at first in Breath of the Wild, so... 
if that gives you any indication of where he is, like, that wouldn't have helped me, I guess, because I thought you came in from a different direction. The first, Well, no, I guess that is the right direction. You just come in through here. So you might have to climb over these mountains a little bit. That's a... Oh, 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 sticky frog, sticky frog, sticky toes. Like, what? What the hell is sticky toes? Don't ask. For God's sake, don't ask. All right, just going to come up through here. Maybe grab this silent shroom while we're here. Actually, kind of think of it. No, we have those. Okay. This is going to be checking everything here. Yeah, so we don't need to go all the way up, and now that we're out of town, we can actually start using the Tulin Toot again. There are Scotch rooms here, which is kind of weird. Normally, you only see those in the <coughs> sky. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a nice little passageway going up through here. I don't know what this is. Oh, yeah, we're like... Oh, this is over where that Cuckoo hideaway was. Yeah, yeah, okay. Cool. Well, we're kind of walking away from it now. Let's see if we can't get back on track here. Oh, you know, since it's nighttime, maybe put on your, uh... Put on your speed boosts, man. Hell yeah. Oh, <laughs> who needs hasty potions? Never again, babe. Not sure if I should go around the other side of this. Anyway, whatever. Stop thinking about it so much. Yeah, I'm just gonna fly on down here. Hey, wait, is that a Korok over there? Hang on. I see a rock, and it looks a little suspicious here. Hey, notice I didn't say sus. You know, when people ask me, sometimes people ask me, like, is there a game out there that you just plain don't like? Because I tend to just kind of be that person who likes everything. Usually I tell them something like Mario Kart 64 or... Oh, dare I say it? Kingdom Hearts? <laughs> The thing is, when I played Kingdom Hearts, I just wasn't into video games back then, so I didn't understand. If I tried to play it again now, I'm sure it would be a lot... I'd like it a lot more. I guess we're gonna have to do this while we're here. Yeah, so much for the main quest. Nope. No, we're getting distracted again. Good luck. It's more toilet paper. I really don't see how this is gonna work, but, um... Yeah, that... Ugh, that is not gonna work, is it? I'm gonna try it, though. You say that it's not gonna work, now let's watch it not work. Here we go. Yeah, holy crap. Why is the... Well, yeah, that wouldn't make sense, though. It's leaning that way. Okay. Would this be okay right here? Just keep it from falling forward? Maybe. Also, this Gerudo over here says, is that a drum? So that's a slight indication that you're pretty close to where you want to be if you're looking for the drummer, who is the next person in the band that we're supposed to be picking up. Let me just see if this works, because... Oh, yeah, yeah, it's really simple. <laughs> You just have to pay attention to the physics of why the sign or how the sign is falling and then figure out how to secure it, and you're pretty good. These are actually kind of nice puzzles. I don't, I don't know, man. I didn't like this at first. This is like the one thing that I'm having more fun with than anything else I did on my first playthrough. That's so weird. I don't know, though. That's, I'm having fun with a lot of stuff. I don't mean to make it sound like this is now suddenly the best thing in the game, but man, it is definitely the thing that has improved the most across playthroughs. I guess now that I'm actually finally being forced to really understand, you know, what the whole deal... Yeah, this is where Hetsu was in the first game. Hetsu. Hetsu. I don't know, man. Because, like, he was standing out here, and he sent you through the tunnel to fight those monsters to get his maracas back. Well, it makes, it makes perfect sense, then, that the drummer would be here now. This actually looks familiar. It didn't look familiar to me last time. I thought it was just some place off the beaten path. What are you doing? Hey, don't interrupt, I'm busy calling peas with my beat. A bee? No, please don't. Keep him away. Anyway, he wants three honeycombs. Lucky for us, we've been picking those up all along. Honey be mine. Wait a second, what's that smell? Here, have some honey. I just happen to have six of them. I checked it before I came here, so I wanted to make sure. So he gives you a silver rupee, which is a damn good reward. Just a, like a mini incidental reward on the way. So he's going to head off and rejoin the band, and then we'll be able to take them to the Great Fairy, and then we'll be good. So if you need bee honey and you don't have it, let me just show you real quick, a really easy place to get it. Just go up here around this chasm and check the woods. They're all over the place up here. So that's that. I'm going to get us on over to Dueling Peaks here so we can get our third Great Fairy. All right, heading on down from the tower. This is where we're at right now. It's right about here. There's Bremen Peak over here, which may or may not be a reference to Bremen Mask from Majora's Mask, if I had to guess. There's actually a, quite a few Koroks in that area, too, so maybe maybe we'll stop by and pick up a few of them? What is over here that's so red? 
This is not the mountain here, is it? Oh wow, it's like further up. Okay, maybe go ahead and start paragliding then. We do have one of those waterfalls here, and notice that since it's raining, the waterfall goes all the way to the ground. Normally it wouldn't do that, and you would have to catch it in midair. Oh wow, I didn't realize we were so close to this. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, the map is still showing sky, so technically we're still in the sky. Let me just see. Actually, since I'm headed this way, I'll head over here to Mount Floria first, so we can get them from top to bottom. You know what I was saying before, that's kind of the way to do things. So it's easier to get from one to the next if you start with the highest one. Yeah, this is called Mount Floria, which is probably a reference to Lake Floria from the Skyward Sword, if I had to guess. I mean, I guess they don't all have to be references, but yeah, we're like going straight to it here. Ooh, yeah. In the first game, there was always a Korok on top of the mountain. I'm not seeing the rock, though, to pick up. Are we in the right spot here? Yes, we are. Maybe it's a fan. Oh, I think I hear it. Actually, hang on. Yeah, it's a fan. Okay. Well, yeah, especially in the rain, it's kind of understandable why you couldn't see that. Let me make sure I'm not wasting a line elbow here. Oh, I did drop by the castle and pick up some more bows. So I can go ahead and get rid of these shitty ones here. These shitty bows, you know. They're covered in shit, you know. That's why you call them shitty bows. They're covered in excrement. Yeah, ha ha. Yeah. All right. Oh man, there's Koroks all over the place here. I don't know if maybe I want to save some of these for later. It's like there's one off to the left here, and I don't know if I want to, because I'm heading north from here right now. I think I'm just gonna head north. Yeah, we'll just keep going north. It'll be fine. This would be a lot easier to see if it wasn't raining, but <laughs> I guess you can't win them all. So there's two like in the immediate vicinity. One over here on top of this mountain here, and if I see that sign guy again, I swear to God, I'm gonna pull my hair out. Uh, let's see here. Ooh, is this like one of those where you have... No, it's actually a rock. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> me, me. All right. And then if we just jump over here to the spot on the map, this really dark, square-looking spot, there's another one here. It's probably going to be a giant tree, if I had to guess. I think that's what it was in the first game, and sure enough, that's what it is in this game. Is he in the tree, though? It doesn't look like it. Oh, I see where he is. He's, uh, he's hanging from the side here. Just a little screwball. And there's another one. Okay, so, like, I, this is probably not smart to do this, to jump down to one of these, because then we're going to be like, eh, I have to go ascend all over again. But there is actually one in the river here, and this is a different kind of Korok that we haven't seen yet. I mean, it, it's sort of similar, but it's something that, like, we haven't really done yet. We've seen these ones where you have to attach something heavy to the cork, you know, to, to prop the other side out, or to pop the other side out. But what we haven't seen is one of these, where what you have to do is pull the cork, or hold the cork down as far under the water as you can, and then let go. And when it pops up from, you know, because corks are buoyant... Oh my god, you're so close to the screen! Yeah, because corks are buoyant, it'll rush to the top of the screen, pop out of the water, and pull the other side out. I don't think that would actually work in real life. So it, wouldn't, it would have to be a pretty weak other side of the cork. So we've just gotten these three here. There's another one up here next to the lake, but I think from where I'm standing right now, it would actually be faster to just fly to it from the tower. So I'm going to do that. Whoops. Oh, man, I'm flying past it here. What am I doing? It's over here, northeast of the lake. Uh, Tulin, you like to guess there a little faster? Yeah. Good job. Good old Tulin. Ever the helpful... Uh, I almost said ever the helpful protagonist. It's not really what he is, though. So we're looking for a couple of statues here. We need to offer an apple to them. Let's see if we can figure out where they are. Now that I think about it, they might actually be down underneath, like in a little cave or something. That's how it often is. Oh yeah, of course it is. Yeah, there's the waterfall here. I was going to say, that waterfall does look a little suspicious. Maybe, you know, maybe it means something. So there you go, yeah. Oh, this is so cozy down in here. Caves behind waterfalls are just always cozy, though. That's just definition cozy right there. That is, if you can get it in there. There we go. Yep, up. Man, 61. We're getting up there, huh, aren't we? <laughs> Probably start thinking about trading those in pretty soon here. I have to get back to Hestu at Lookout Landing. The thing is, eventually, he's going to take off from Lookout Landing and not be there anymore. Oh, my God. Seriously. Okay, so east from here, right here, is another one. Yeah, I'm actually doing these right now, like, seriously. I mean, I feel like it kind of has been a while since I've really gone gung-ho with the Koroks here. So, 
I don't know. So this one, if I, I believe this is one where you're gonna have to shoot balloons, but um, where are the balloons? Wait, what is that down there? It looks like a pile of leaves. Is that what we're doing here? I thought we were shooting balloons. Hang on a second. <laughs> oh, actually, I hear it. Hold on. Oh my god, we're just gonna keep falling, aren't we? So fall till there's no falling left to be done here. Wow, where in the world are we? Oh god! <laughs> I didn't know Like Likes had feet. Oh, that's disgusting. Man. I do hear it. It's right over here next to the tree, isn't it? Oh, there's an iron room. <laughs> oh, it's not under the rock. It's not gonna be that easy. Man, I can't believe Like Likes have feet. What the hell, dude? Makes me want to go down there and kill it. Jeez. Kill it with fire. Jesus Christ. Alright. Okay, so once again, rather than trying to climb back up here, I'm just gonna take the tower. The towers are just basically the key to the game. Now that I think about it, is this that tower? Is this the one that has like the... Wait, let me go north of here. Oh my gosh, yeah, there, there's another one right up there. That one's like really close. I'm gonna go ahead and get this one. <laughs> I am so sorry about this. I'm telling this is distractions the game, let me tell you. And they... They really don't purport it to be anything other than that, and they shouldn't. Rain's just been going on for a long ass time here. This is gonna be one of those where you have to jump though, so... Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Okay, no, it's fine, we got like two stamina wheels here. Plus we're climbing up a fairly, like, uh, not steep. What is the opposite of steep anyway? Just shallow, maybe? Oh wow, they're gonna make us work for this one, are they? It's a good thing, oh, actually it's not nighttime. I was gonna say, good thing I got my night boost, but it just looks like nighttime because it's raining so hard. And so apparently there was like a solar eclipse the other day. I didn't even know that was happening. But people were taking pictures of it, and I'm like, I didn't see anything out my window. I didn't see any lovely darkness in the middle of the day. That would have been so cool, though. Anyway, we got it. Oh, but guess what, though? There's like one right down here. <laughs> I have fallen into the trap, and there is no saving me. There really isn't. It's like right here. Let's just go get it. Good lord. Oh, wow, there's a camp here. So watch out for that. It should be right over here. Oh, it's probably in this tree, isn't it? Well, that's perfect. If we can grab onto the tree in midair, we can just go ahead and get this. Oh, jeez, really? If we get to the top, we can just hold ourselves there. There we go. Now I need to examine. There we go. <laughs> How many times are we going to warp back to this tower to keep doing stuff around here? I mean, if there's a way to do it, that's probably it. Boy, that's a big-ass encampment, let me tell you. Can we just maybe just go straight to Dueling Peaks? We don't have to go to the tower. How far is that? Oh god, that's like all the way over there. Hell, at this point. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's do the tower. Alright, no more bullshit. We're going to Dueling Peaks for real this time. But I'm gonna at least wait until I'm in Hyrule before I start paragliding. Just so I can kind of see what I'm doing here. All these chasms. All these chasms count towards 100% too. Like, you have to jump in every single one of them for it to mark it on the map, so <laughs> get used to that, I suppose. So we don't even have to look at the map to know where we are, because you can see Dueling Peaks from right here. Even though, allegedly, it'd be a lot easier to see if it wasn't raining. Well, hey, the rain's about to stop right now, actually. It's perfect. And I can't think of a better thing to do once we get there than to do that really obvious glaring shrine that's waiting in front of us here. Do we need another fast forward here? Any excuse to put cool music in my videos? Yeah, why not? the last of my yellow stamina wheel here. Let's just go ahead and get rid of it, because it just kind of gets in the way. Oh, wow. <laughs> Still took fall damage. Oh, well. We'll just sleep when we get to the stable. What is that sound? Is that my phone? Oh, hang on a second. Phone call. Okay, the caller ID says PROBABLY FRAUD in all caps. I think because of that, I might just ignore it. <laughs> Jeez, I never get actual phone calls on that thing. That's so weird. 
It's like I do all my communications through like Discord and stuff. You know, it's like I order all of my sandwiches with mayonnaise. Once you see my sweet moves, you gotta stay amazed. Fingers move so fast at the place of blaze. Well, being that this is Dueling Peaks, I'm expecting something fairly easy here. This is like the fifth shrine you would get in the first game. Oh, combat training shields. Lovely. Let's now bust up our good shield here. It'll probably give you some, but... Actually, from what I remember, this one kind of tripped me up a little bit the first time. Because you're not necessarily supposed to use the shield the way you normally do. You're supposed to actually deflect his projectiles with it, which is something you can do in the game. But it's not something I find myself doing very often. So... So when I came to the shrine, especially the second time, I was like, wait, what the hell am I supposed to do here? But I'll just try and show you, and hopefully I don't mess it up too bad here, because you can actually die here. Your other attacks are ineffective here. That's the most threatening statement this game makes in the entire game. Like, that's basically the accept your helplessness of this game. With accept your helplessness being obviously a, a Metroid um, Dread reference. Anyway, so do that like that, and you got him. It's no problem, really. The problem is you got to be mindful of what kind of shield you're using, because if it's fire, then you don't want to use a wood shield, that's not going to work. And if it's electricity, you don't want to use a metal shield. I'm using a Zonai shield, so it actually turns out that's going to work on everything, which is good. So baddies roam once more, let's go. See, the thing I found with this, though, is that you kind of want to do it a little bit earlier than you think you have to. Like, yeah, you see, that's way too late right there. Also, you don't want to have them lined up with each other, or else they're both going to throw their thing at the same time. There we go. It's one. Let's get you now. And that's... Oh, that's too early. Okay, see? that's Well, that's a nice little demonstration there of what too early looks like. Grab that before it disappears. And that's too early also. Maybe just get up, like, really close to him. I mean, we fought Phantom Ganon before. We know how this works. We played... No. Hey, we get to see game over in a yellow text or green text or whatever that is. Wow. All right, then let's try this one more time, shall we? Maybe I should go get that other zone I charge. There we go. No, you just have to not panic, you know. That's really the end of the end goal here. Huh? You've proven your mastery. Now proceed to the animus chamber. Blah blah blah. I don't care. Well, hey, I guess at least we get to pick up the Zonai charges they left behind. But see how they, it lets me pick them up there, but not in some of the other ones? It's really weird how inconsistent it is with whether or not it lets you take those. It's not a huge deal because it's not like those things are one time or whatever. Uh, I don't want to get rid of my kite shield because I like how it looks, but sometimes you can't afford to do that. You can't afford to be like that. But also, like, this is a shield I already have, so... Why not just drop the one that you're carrying and take the new one? There you go. That's about the best we can hope for here. There we go. Alright, if this is what I think it is... Okay, so there's our great fairy there. We'll get to that in a second. I wanted to check something out here, though. So, when you're trying to get the 100% in this game, every piece of the map, like every time any words come up on the screen that indicate where you are, like, it's going to tell us what bridge this is right here. This is Big Twin Bridge. Each one of these counts as 0.4% of the map completion. But, for some strange reason, these bridges here, maybe it's just one of them, but I think it's actually both of them. These bridges count 0 0.08. Nobody knows why that is, but, you know, that's some pretty, uh, pretty good progress we just made there then, isn't it? <laughs> Little Twin Bridge, Big Twin Bridge. Yes, Little Man, Big Man. Track 7 from Toad the Wet Sprocket's album, Coil. What does that say? Wait a minute. Are you trying to fix the bridge? Severe damage has made this crossing hazardous, especially for horses. I don't want beer for my horses. My mom used to think that song was so funny. And she would sing it, she would do a long pause between my and horses. And then she'd just go like, Horses. H-A-W-S-E-S. -E well, there's the music musicians right over there. I'm gonna go, go ahead and um, activate the stable first, since we're here. And we are gonna need our horse, so maybe go ahead and get him over there. One point to your pony points, yay! Hey, can I go ahead and sleep and get another stamina wheel? Maybe I'll do that while I'm here. Uh, no, not right now. I'm gonna sleep. Big footprints, oh god. I don't know what you're talking about. Got another recipe over here. It looks like uh, apple butter... 
honey cane sugar and Hylian rice. Might have to test that out sometime. Oh. Welcome to the stable. Do you want to lodge with us? I mean, I haven't really been paying much stock into recipes, so maybe when I see one of those, it might just be worth it to make it. Otherwise, I'm just going to have some video randomly somewhere where I do all of them at once. <laughs> That's going to be a hard-ass video to make, though, if I do that, if I do it that way. Instead, when I go to make food, I usually just end up making the same thing. I just throw three pieces of meat in there. Because, like, at the end of the day, it has the same effect as most of the other foods. Like, some of them will have random boosts and stuff like that, but it's stuff that you might probably... It's, like, stuff that you probably don't care about, but... Anyway, good afternoon. We present you with one point for staying at the inn. So you get one point for visiting the stable and one point for sleeping there. So that's how you get most of your pony points in the end. But uh, what was that recipe again? Let me just try it. Apple, butter, honey, sugar. That might actually be wheat, not rice. Let's see, I have, yeah, I don't know. I don't think that's the same thing. I think that says wheat over there. And I don't actually have any wheat. All right, in that case, never mind. Let's just get on with that freaking great fairy already. I've only been trying to for the last 10 years here. Oh wow, they're like all together now because I have the horn guy. I'm not supposed to have him yet. He's the one that we get for the fourth great fairy in the order I'm doing these in. Either way, Beats. Beats the drummer. Perfect name, actually. You've done so much for us. Now can you take us to the great fairy and we're going to really freak out about this. This one, actually, I thought was probably the most annoying one. And I'll explain why a little more when we get there. Great fairy, I know. Let's so go through all this text again. He's gonna say, yeah, she's right over there. See the purple smoke? She's been snorting her purple... Oh, there's gotta be some drug that starts with P so I can make an alliteration joke out of that. So, smoking the purple pipe? Yeah, that works. I'm sure the great fairy give you a blessing when you wake up and all that stuff, so... Yeah. Serenade to Kotera, which I believe was the one in the desert. Or was that? No, that was... Oh, God. I forget. Anyway, they're all standing over here waiting for you to do something to make something that can get their wagon over there. And here's the thing now. You can't actually attach Zonai devices to this. And if you try to move it, he's going to say, What are you doing? Please don't do anything strange, our dear Breezer. So you can't attach Zonai devices to it, and you can't pick it up and move it anywhere. So how the hell are you supposed to do it? Well, it turns out, if you actually just talk to him and activate the whatever it is you're trying to do here, then he'll let you move it. It's really stupid. I don't know why it's like that, but meh. the bridge is no use at all. He has to explain to you whatever. Then they'll let you move it without flipping out like they always do. Yeah, see? Yeah, whoa, well, what? So the solution to this one also is weird because even though you can't attach Zonai devices to it, you can attach Zonai devices that are just sitting out like these over here. So if you take it out of your bag and try to put it on there, he's going to say, oh, no, 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 don't do that. But if you take these ones off the rock here and use them, no, he'll be just fine with that. So, or they'll be just fine. I don't know who's really running the show here, but we're going to take these and move them out here. We also want a fan, so you know, right over there. Let's grab that, too. And this ought to be pretty simple here. Oh, and we also need, like, a base, because we need something f to make it float, because we're going across the river. So in that case, we'll just grab a piece of wood here. You really only need one piece of wood. It's not a huge deal. I should have just rotated it rather than turning it all the way around there, but okay. So what we'll do is set this down here. Oh, actually, you know, now that I think about it, you can't, you still can't attach Zonai devices to it, but you can attach them to the raft you make to put it on. So that's what we're doing here. Yeah. I had my facts all mixed up a little bit there. Yeah, they really do seem to be a little flipped out by our ability here, don't they? Let's put a fan on the back of it. We'll attach a battery, although in my case you probably don't need it because I already have three batteries, but better to be safe than sorry. So we'll put that, actually we'll put that on the fan just to be cool. And then last but not least, remove the boat itself, or not the boat, but the thing. Try to make sure this is... Do I want to attach this? Uh, I don't know if I should. I don't think it would let me. Okay, maybe it will. Well, I'm glad I did that because I don't want it falling off while we make the trip out there. Oh, and before we start, actually put it in the water so you don't want to be trying to lift it and move it around while they're sitting in it. You want to do as little of that as possible so they're not freaking out at you here. So 
So that should be good right there, I think. Let's try it. Like, once you have it put together, this is actually the easiest one to actually make the journey. It's just getting it set up is the hard part, so here we go. Everyone get on board before he changes his mind. Uh, you're the one that's going to be changing your mind over here. You know, like Sister Hazel. Oh, gosh. It's a little crooked there, isn't it? All right. This is a grueling experience. Let's get this show on the road then, baby. No! Wah! Waluigi! Oh, God, that's leaning a little bit. Maybe I didn't quite attach that right in the middle there. All we gotta do is get him to this beach over here. Once he gets to the beach, they'll do the rest themselves. So, just do that. Like, I thought you had to come around the other side because it looks like she's pretty far inland here, but you can just go right here. And they do it. Alright, more cutscenes, more laughing at the Great Fairy on the same screen as other people. I find it hilarious that the horn guy has been here the whole time and he just hasn't been acknowledged at all because he's not supposed to be there yet. Amen. Sorry. Alright. Oh boy. Oh man, coming on out of that. Coming out of my cage and I've been doing just fine. Gotta, gotta be down because I want it all. Started out with a butt and now it's all over. And now she looks like... No. Stop. Just don't go there. Mm-hmm. Wait, who are you? I only talked to Link. Yeah, where's the text already? We've done it! Yay! I think my heart just picked up the tempo, yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> this is even funnier than the other thing. I'm gonna have to make a thumbnail with ha 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 in the thumbnail. And this right here. <laughs> just what the fuck, man? <laughs> I wanna die. No, I'm not. I mean, I will someday, but no, not now. Okay. Oh, God. Anyway, it is intoxicating, but now we can get stuff to level 3. I seriously doubt we're gonna be able to do much, especially with that labor cost. It's gonna be like 100 now. Oh, wow, look at this. Well, we're already... Jeez. Well, here's where that amber comes in. You need 20 amber for each one of these, and you're gonna need 30 for the next step. So again, don't sell your amber. But notice we also need the cobbling guts. But might as well do this. This will be our best defense in the game now. And, um, <laughs> as was the case in the first game, when you start to really get your armor leveled up like this, it becomes kind of a joke. You know, stuff just doesn't do any damage to you because of how the system works. It's basically the same system, you know. It's like every number on the defense is a quarter of a heart. So we're raising this by four. You know, that's one less heart of damage every time you take a hit while wearing it. With all three of them put together, that's three less hearts of damage. Or I guess technically, since they're all 12, it's nine less hearts of damage total. Because they all add up to 36. Each one's a quarter of a heart. It's nine hearts. So whatever would do nine damage to you, you know, being naked would just basically do nothing when you're wearing this. It would still do a quarter of a heart because it has to do something. But it would just bring it down to a quarter of a heart and that would be it. It'd be so much simpler if we just use numbers, but <laughs> people don't like numbers for some reason. We can do this one too. It's all that glowing cave fish, deep firefly. You know, I picked some of those up in the depths last night thinking I wouldn't need them. Turns out I did. So now this is 12 defense too. And notice now it's 200 for each one of these. Just imagine how much it's going to be for level 4. But I guess that it's kind of good that they did that though, because they do basically lock you out of getting level 4 unless you want to do a lot of grinding. It's like, you'll get rupees naturally over the course of the game, but you have to actually play the game, too. You can't just go in straight and get everything here. But yeah, so we got stuff at level 3 now. That is nuts, man. I love it. So now that Great Fairy is available for us any time. And since we have the Horn Guy, we can just go ahead and do this one, too. Um... Is there a better way to... Let me see. I, haven't, I never did this shrine up here, did I? I mean, we're actually probably getting up there on time, though, so... 
Yeah, we're gonna have to save this for next time. So next time on Tears of the Kingdom, let me find some... Oh, man. Ooh, let's get some colorful grass to hide behind in this one. All right, I guess my feet are just gonna be soaking wet. Until next time on Breath of the... Or Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> uh, we'll do the last great fairy. See you guys later.